<clears throat> putting way too much time into making this sound good. So uh, I thought it might be cool um, if I take the time and code my way through the Rustlings tutorial, which is a tutorial from the, the Rust team to teach developers that are new to the language um, how the language works, um, obviously. So if you want, you can watch me do it. And then you can just code along. Let's let's take a look at this one. If you haven't seen this repository before, um, this is what it's called, rustlang slash uh, rustlings. And if we take a look at this here, we see that uh, there's some installation instructions and also write. And one thing that's really cool about this is that um, it comes with this, uh, apparently with this interactive um, moat in your command line. So once we've installed this thing, we can run it and then the program is going to walk me or us rather uh, through the exercises. So that's that's kind of cool. Um, I would say we just go ahead and, and do this now and then um, see uh, what happens. Okay. So I'm on a Mac OS. I'm going to go ahead and uh, I'm going to take this command right here and I'm going to switch to my terminal and run this command. Obviously, there's a bunch of prerequisites needed um, to, to make this work. One of them being git to clone the repository, uh, the Rust compiler, but all of these things you can find here in the description. Um, so make sure to have those installed first. Um, and then in the meanwhile, while this is uh, installed, we can take a look here at the uh, exercises folder. So you see that there's a folder for every uh, topic of these exercises. So there's a bunch of exercises for variables. There's a bunch of exercises for the option type and many other things, error handling, enums, and so on and so forth. So in, I'm going to, mm, I'm going to try to create videos for every single one of these. And then hopefully there's a nice playlist coming out of that at the end of the day. All right. So this thing is still installing. All right, cool. <clears throat> it's installed. So we can run Rustlings now. Let's do this. Rustlings. And it says, welcome to Rustlings. Right. So this command must be executed from the Rustlings repository. So let's CD into that. And then I'm going to run uh, Rustlings. And actually, there's a bunch of installation instructions here or uh, introduction instructions, I guess. Right. And it says that... Uh, so it's a bunch of things. Oh, so at the end of the day, what it wants us to do is run uh, Rustlings Watch. So let's do this. Rustlings Watch. There you go. Right. So this is how it works. We run Rustlings Watch, and this is going to try to uh, run one of the exercise files, one of the exercise um, Rust files, and they have some bugs in it, which is why they don't compile. So when you run this command Rustlings Watch, the fact that we're seeing a compilation error is actually intended. So our job now is to fix this. So what I'm going to do is um, I'm going to open up another window here. I'm going to open my editor of choice. And then I'm going to open up the file that this command is executing. So we can see that there's a compilation error and variables, variables one.rs. So let me just open that one up. Okay, so this is the code that we're dealing with. And there's a bunch of other instructions here as well. It says, maybe compile, execute the command rustlings hint variables one. So that's also cool. Apparently there's a way to get a hint about what needs to be done to fix this uh, compilation error. And once we're done fixing the thing, we need to remove this I am not done comment. This is telling the rustlings command that it needs to compile the next program. Okay, let's see. So what's the issue here? The compiler says cannot find value X in this scope. This is in line 12, x equals 5, not found in the scope. Now let's take a look here. Yeah, yeah, so we see here this is variable x equals 5 and this is not compiling. Now the reason this is not compiling is because there's no let keyword here which is needed to introduce a variable in Rust. So if I save this and switch back here, let's see if it, yep, it compiles. Wonderful. Once again, it tells us we need to remove this I am not done comment so that it's going to compile the next uh, the next exercise. So I'm going to go ahead and remove this, save this file. Here we go again. So the next compilation error says that there is a missing type on the variable. Let's take a look at the file. Again, we see that the file that is failing here is variables2. So I'm going to open up that file, variables2. 
And here we see that we have this variable x and there's an if condition here that checks whether x is 10 and then it prints out either 10 or not 10. And the issue that the compiler has is that there's no type in this variable. So we're trying to compare this variable with a number value without actually making sure that this variable is indeed a number. So let's give it a number type. There's a bunch of them in Rust. I'm just gonna go with U32, save this file and see what happens. Still an error, right. So it says that X is probably not initialized. Now we can go ahead and actually type hint here to see what the compiler wants from us or I mean, it actually tells us what it wants, but um, let's see what the Rustlings repository wants us to do. So here it says the compiler message is saying that a Rust cannot infer the type that the variable binding X has with what is given here. What happens if you annotate line seven with a type annotation? What if you do both? What type should X be anyway? What if X is the same type as 10? What if it's a different type? Okay, so we can give it a value. Let's say it's zero. And we see it's compiling, wonderful, it's not 10. If we change it to 10 when we save it, it's also compiling and it outputs 10 as expected. Since we are assigning an actual number here, we can probably get rid of this type annotation because Rust is able to infer it. And this is working as well. So wonderful, we can remove this comment here and go ahead with the next exercise. Okay, so in variables three, we have an error that says cannot assign twice to immutable variable X. And it even gives us a little hint here. It says that we can make this binding mutable with the mute keyword. So this is an, uh, actually a really cool feature of the Rust compiler because it's really actually really good at telling us what the error is and also giving us an idea what needs to be done to, to fix the error, which is uh, exactly what's happening here. So if we take a look at the file variable three we see here we have a let x equals three and then there is another assignment happening in line nine this is not possible because x is an immutable value um, in fact every variable in rust by default is immutable we cannot change it unless we make it mutable explicitly so we can change that by putting the mute keyword here it's also very nice because if you read the code you know immediately that this variable is most likely changed through throughout this 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 program. I save the file and see what happens. Nice code is compiling. Number three, number five. Wonderful. Okay, we're done. Off to the next one. Okay, so the next error is that we're borrowing of possibly initialized variable x. Let's take a look at the code in variables four. Okay, so here we see we have a variable x and we want to output it. And the fact that it says it's borrowing is actually a, well, not really an implementation detail, but it's a detail that's not really important right now for this exercise. And the, the main point here is that X is not initialized. So if we change this to zero, we actually get a compiling uh, program. You can still uh, ask for a hint to see um, what's going on. So it says, oops, in this exercise, we have a variable binding that we've created on line seven and we're trying to use it on line eight. We can print out something that isn't there. Try giving X a value. This is an error that can cause bugs that's very easy to make in any programming language. Thankfully, the Rust compiler has caught this for us. Yes, that's right. And we fix it. And again, here we can remove the annotation at this point because zero is obviously a number. So uh, Rust is able to infer a dedicated type for it. So I'm gonna remove this comment here, save and move on to the next one. Variables five, we have mismatched types. In line nine, we are assigning a number three, but it says that it's expecting a reference string or rather a reference stir, which is a different type. Let's take a look at the, the file. So I'm gonna open up variables five. So here we see we have a variable number, which has this string here and we output it. And then there is the same variable where we assign a different value, which in this case is a number. And this is exactly what the compiler is complaining about. It's actually expecting a string in this case. Now Rust allows us to reinitialize variables. And I think this is what it wants here. So let's actually ask for a hint to be sure. 
So it says that in variables three, we already learned how to make an immutable variable mutable using a special keyword. Unfortunately, this doesn't help us much in this exercise because we want to assign a different typed value to an existing variable. Sometimes you may also like to reuse existing variable names because you were just converting values to different types, like in this exercise. Fortunately, Rust has a powerful solution to this problem, shadowing. Okay, I'm not going to read this uh, chapter now, but I know that we can now go ahead here and just do let number equals three. So you see here we're initializing let with a string and in line nine, we kind of reinitialize it again with a different value. This is shattering the previous initialization and you can see that this is compiling fine. Okay, removing this comment here and move on to the next one. All right, so missing type for const item in variables six. So opening up variables uh, six, let's take a look. So here we have a constant number with the value three and the compiler complains that there is no type. And if we ask for a hint, it says we know about variables and mutability, but there's another important type of variable available, constants. Constants are always immutable and they're declared with keyboard, keyboard, right? They're declared with keyword const rather than let. Constant types must also always be annotated. Okay, so let's do that. We have a number, I'm gonna give it u32, and it's compiling. Okay, um, that, that's it with exercises about variables.